This is the Rich Dad Stockcast with Andy Tanner, the show that kicks 401ks in the asphalt and teaches you to be the master of your own stock investing domain. And here's your host, Greg Arthur. Okay, welcome to the show. We're going to do a topic that we have talked about before, but we're going to talk about it again in, in a little different way um, because it's come up again. There was just a big article by Ray Dalio, I think his name is, and a you know, billionaire stock guy, fun manager, trader type guy. And he said, to quote, trying to time the stock market is harder than competing in the Olympics. And I don't know how many of you know this, but Andy Tanner actually was quite the athlete himself. I don't think he made it to the Olympics, but I think he will have a very strong opinion on timing the market. So Andy, welcome. Well, thank you. I mean, uh, the Olympics is is the best of the best in the world where you're winning by a tenth of a second and you're training uh, probably more than any other athlete in the world. Um, so I think uh, talking about, I, first of all, I agree with Ray. I, I don't know if it's harder than the Olympics because I don't know how hard that is, but I think that's a fair metaphor. That <laughs> I think his point was it's pretty doggone hard. And I think he's right. I think that's fair. But you know what? I think that's what everyone's at least initial um, thought of what investing is. It's the, it's the damnable misery of, uh, you know, as a teacher, you love a clean slate. Uh, you know, I had a little basketball team that we started in the third grade and I taught them how to dribble. And I'm watching now, you know, in high school and every one of them dominate because I got them before they had any bad habits. Right, now right. when I coach a kid that's been playing, you got to change it. And I think with, with stock investing, it's the same thing is half of what, half my job is undoing uh, the context of poorness. <laughs> <laughs> right. the, the way people think about it. And, you know, you look at CNBC, if you said don't time the market and don't worry about directions, and the, the micro directions day to day, CNBC has no audience. Right, but, right. So if you're going to have a financial news channel, how do you get eyeballs? Oh my gosh, look at the market today. Oh, today up to, oh, look, by four o'clock tickers in real time. You know, it's, it's now, 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 now to get eyeballs. So we feed into that. And so that'll be a good part of our conversation is how do you undo that? I, I rarely watch CNBC, man. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, um, I've had Robert, you know, as my mentor for 15 years. How long have I known you? Probably, Probably almost all of those 15 years. Yeah, yeah, and yet, cool. about two years ago, I went to sell my house. And do you know why I was selling my house? I, I was convinced that I was timing the market to sell on top. And then I was going to wait and buy a house on the bottom. Well, <laughs> guess what? I, I missed out on about half a million dollars. So, Unbelievable. So even like... Like I am constantly being told that's stupid. Timing things is stupid, and yet my it's like in the DNA of a human that yeah, it's that you can you can pull this off. And and you know to say it can't be done is not true. It can be done because like getting a perfect top and perfect bottom is beyond Olympic event. That's now you're trying to win the lottery every day, right? That's numerically just stupid. Right. But, but, you know, there's been a battle between what we call fundamental analysis, which is looking at the strength of a company and technical analysis, which is looking at the market's judgment of its value in terms of price. And uh, so the value of the business versus the, 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 there's certain people that, you know, values like beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder. So what I value in a business might, might not be reflected in the price, right? Right. Right. And, and that disparity is really what we call value investing is when we say, hey, these prices are unjustifiably low or high based on what's going on in the company, where other people, technicals, they don't care about it because they're like, look, the price is what it is. I'm going to trade the chart. That debate between which one's more effective is a silly one. But, you know, anytime you have two methods, they tend to compete rather than to cooperate. OK, but can I, I want to jump in there. So two questions for you. I see technical as really trying to do just that, using charts to try to time the market and, and all that. And if I'm right here, I know you teach technicals in your training, your four pillars training. I do. And so why would you teach technicals if 
if what it's designed to do is time to market? Well, I, I think our key word that, that gives people insight is it's not designed to do just that. It can do other things. I think what you're saying is true is most technical analysts are known for doing that buy low, sell high, you know, where's the reversal candles, where's the, you know, the MACD crosses, whatever indicator you want to use. Oh, we've got a turn in the market. But what I do is I, I, I would, I tell people all the time, Greg, I probably wouldn't be interested in stock if there weren't options because uh, what the options do is give me another source of protection. If I want to buy some, and it's like in, in the book, uh, Unfair Advantage, Robert had me write on this. I says, look, what's the difference between an amateur and a pro? Uh, it's in how they get their cash flow and how they manage risk. An amateur wants to get their cash flow from capital gain, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and, and try to get some cash out of that net net. Um, a professional will, will, will do it by selling contracts and by collecting dividends. Um, uh, an amateur will protect his portfolio through diversification of a mutual fund. A professional will buy contracts like puts or calls to manage risk. And, and I think that's a broad statement, but it's a fair basic statement. So in order to, uh, where we use technical analysis, we take it from Olympic sport to maybe a high school sport <laughs> because we're, we're going to use it in a different way. And what I mean by that is, you can use technical analysis to try to guess direction, which is Olympic level difficulty to use Ray Dalio's analogy. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's that difficult, but I get it. It's difficult. Certainly not my forte, but you can also use technical analysis to do something like way more, way easier, which is to look at a range and detect possible ranges. So, you know, we, we, this would be a good point. Um, to come back to, um, I'll, I'll quiz you. Let's take, uh, you know, Apple stock or whatever you want, you know, AT&T let's take, that's like 20 bucks. That's easy. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Yeah. Let's like, help AT&T me out here. Like 25 bucks right now. Let's say, okay. So it's 25 bucks tomorrow. Is it going up or down? Uh, no idea. So it's basically a coin flip, isn't it? It's just, yeah. hard. I, and if you ask me, I don't have any idea. So here you've got, the, the rich dad advisor, you know, is supposed to know what is supposed to know that answer when other people can't, you know, I, I have no power uh, insight to guess that. Right. I don't, I don't run any more than you would. And if you guessed and I guessed 10 times over 10 days, we'd have the same score. Right. 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 Um, all right. How about this? Do you think at and is going bankrupt tomorrow? Um, I'm, I'm fairly confident they will not. I would be close to 100% calm. I, I would be, I would be floored. Now, now look at the difference. If I say it's going up tomorrow, well, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'd be glad I was right. But if I say, look, it's not going bankrupt tomorrow and I was wrong on that, I'd be completely floored. You're like, you'd be shocked. Oh, how? Right. So how about this? Do you think it's going to 50 bucks tomorrow? So double, I'm going to say probably not. Okay, so I basically just guessed a range with almost 100% confidence. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I said, yeah. I, said I don't know the direction, but now I have a range. It's above zero and below 50. And I'm yeah. almost at 100% on that, like 99.1009s at the end of it, right? <laughs> right. I, there'd have to be some acquisition or merger news to make it double that was just stupendous right new technology that no one else has that they release some crazy you know all of a sudden your cell phone can do your dental work or something who knows you know whatever okay now what about this how about this let's say you think it's going to get cut in half tomorrow it's going to go from 20 to 1250 i'm going to say no i'm going to say no and i don't think it's going to get to 30 five and gain another, you know, 37. I think it's going to lose 12 and I think it's gained 12. And you know what, to tell you the truth, my confidence in that range is also close to hundred percent. Gotcha. Okay. And so I'm going to use technical analysis to squeeze down that range of where I think it go. Now that's the beauty that if someone were to ask me, give me one of the reasons a person should learn this, right? If, if someone said, Andy, do your napkin presentation 
uh, on your four pillars, right? You do your do your elevator pitch on it. I'd say one of the places I could go with that is say, what if I told you you could make money by getting the range right instead of the direction right? Which yeah. which game would you want to learn? Oh, definitely the range. The range, and so the technical analysis helps me as an option seller. If I want to commit to buying something like like Coinbase is a good example in our in our uh, mentor club each week is we looked at the, the the range of Coinbase and we said, look, if it fell down to here, we don't think it's going to happen. But man, if it did, it'd be awesome to buy it there. Right. Yeah. So we just sold puts month after month after month, promising to buy it and never got that low. Finally, after months of doing this, building up this huge cash flow, it fell down way low, cheap, below those technical levels. I actually broke them. We were able to buy the stock. We had stockpiled all this premium, and now our cost basis is even lower than the sale price. Because that's you made where, all that money all the time, yeah. you didn't have to buy it. And that's not an Olympic sport. That's a high school sport. Get you know here, 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 here. Oh, ding, 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 and it, you know where and it. It could have never gotten there, but we just still collected the premiums. Right? right. And there's no more risk to doing that than owning the stock. Because if it went lower, it'd be lower. And that's what you'd do if you had a stock ownership. So the ability to bring in an additional beyond the dividends that are paid in some stocks, the ability to bring in consistent, um, regular income monthly. Uh, is very, it's the feeling of rent, you know, where what's easier to guess the, the real estate market or whether or not your renter will pay their rent. Uh, that's a good, uh, that's a good way to look at that. You know, so, so yeah, I think, it, the, but, but back to your original thing, why is it that people don't see it that way? That's my big question, right? Um, Cause you, you started the, the topic off with a really good statement is why does everyone like, you know, where I'm going to sell my house. I'm going to try and time the market. Why do we keep, it's like beating our heads against the wall. It's like women and men constantly trying to understand each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, but seriously, like, what is the answer though? Yeah. It, it really is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, when people look at stock almost a hundred percent of the time, the conversation is about the price of the stock rather than the quality of the business. Yeah. Rarely do we hear about the dividend to the point that, to, I mean, the ratio of talk about the dividend to the talk about the price on a CNBC or Bloomberg is it's gotta be a thousand to one. Right. How many stocks do you talk about price without even mentioning their dividend? They're never a one, two punch hand in hand. It's once in a while they say, oh, the dividend's this once in a while. But most of the time, just, just watch five minutes of CNBC, count how many times they talk about the price as opposed to a dividend. So they don't see this. And yet the, the analogy I've used on this podcast before that I'd remind people of is Fruit of the Loom. Now, what's the difference between Hanes and Fruit of the Loom? They both sell underwear. Well, I own some Hanes because it's tradable. It's a stock. I can trade it right? They've done very well through the COVID stuff with all the shipping and logistics problems. They've done really well, but I don't own Fruit of the Loom. And I wish, I, and well, technically I own a little Fruit of the Loom because I own some Berkshire too, but, but uh, Warren Buffett doesn't get up in the morning and worry about the price of Fruit of the Loom because it's not for sale. It's a privately owned company. Berkshire owns all of it. So they don't wake up in the morning. So if all of a sudden Haynes price were to drop and me as a stock owner say oh my gosh the price is dropping well that means people aren't buying underwear they, we should be equally panicked about fruit of the loom shouldn't we right. but, it, but, but it, 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 it is saintly because it doesn't have that that awful uh mortality of stock price that can kill it with a zero price does that make sense yeah completely so that is, so we, we, we beat on that. Now, there are more important things to change in the world right now than people's attitudes on stocks. You know, like if you want to have a women's right march, I'll freaking hop in there. You want to take a, a country from a third world country out of that, empower the women. Let's march on that. Or if you, whatever, whatever social issue that's important to you that are huge, we keep talking about the same thing, you know, issues with race. You keep talking about it, keep talking. We keep making the same mistakes over and over. 
Well, you, what do you do? You keep talking about them until they improve. So in a less important vein of investing context, which is important as all these other big things, but you know, you want to retire, you want to make some money. What context do I need to improve there? We got to start talking again about the quality of companies rather than the dang stock price, because right now the stock prices might be very deceptive. Some of them are what I call detached from their fundamentals. Right, right. Like detached, like the rocket shift has left the orbit, man. It's, it might not come down to earth, but when it does, it's going to burn in the atmosphere. So um, it's, a, it's so fun. It's so exciting. And the, the gift I want to give people in 2022 is the gift of simplicity, you know, to use metaphors and stick figures and drawing to help people realize, wow, you know, I don't need to be an Olympic level guy because they probably have a sense when they've tried. Maybe someone has tried, Greg, to buy low and sell high and guess and found how difficult that Olympic sport is. And that. They, said, they said, well, it's not for me. I, I can't do it. I, it. That's for people that can predict the future. They should stop for a moment, perhaps, and say, well, I need to know how to predict the future anyway. But he uses this. Could I pick a range? Could I, could I look at these charts and maybe say, hmm, you'll find a totally different experience by learning to look at charts in terms of range. Like when you look at a, 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 just a price and you say, is it going up or down tomorrow? It, you're stymied like you should be stymied because you are. Yeah. You feel stymied because you are. But all of a sudden when you say, okay, where is this like? And you look at its history and its trend and different things, you're like, my level of confidence to choose a range can be very, very high. In fact, I can get it down to a percentage. Every yeah. time I trade, I can say, I can tell you how confident I am in being right. Like notice I never said I was quite 100%. But I can get it down to where I'm, I'm 30% confident, 40, 50, 60, 80. Most of the trades I make are made with 80 to 90% confidence. That's the range I like. And you get that's your confidence. A, that's a great feeling. You get your confidence from the technical analysis. I do. Yeah. And the fundamentals. And then the thing that completes my confidence though, is let's say I'm 80% confident that it'll stay in this range. And I set up my affairs to cash flow that way. What's really gives me the confidence is my fourth pillar risk management, because that's where I deal with the 10% on either side. Right. Right. That range that I, I get bid on once in a while. Well, I only get bid on it if I don't have, risk management strategy. So when you, when you change from being that guy that's doing the Dalio thing that you talked about the Olympic sport of up or down, up or down, what is it, up or down to say, okay, here's 80% chance of what'll happen. That's plan a. And if I'm wrong, here's my plan B and I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right, man. Now we're in, now. And, and my joy is when people Oh, it usually happens about halfway through my four, four pillars course, about halfway after they've done fundamentals and technicals and I sprinkle a little taste of risk management in there. That's where it clicks. And, and it's a great click to have. And boom, you know, they, they're like, okay, I'm in the club now. I get it. I understand the difference. I'm no longer trying to do the Olympic sport, pretty good high school player. And it's, I'm having fun. Right, right, right. So real quick, everybody, uh, we, we mentioned Andy as a teacher. So if you go to the show notes, you can definitely get access to his class. Uh, in addition, there's some free trainings that Andy's done. So obviously highly recommend that. Um, Andy, two things. So I feel like I learned that time in the market is a fool's uh, Aaron. Largely. But also their technical does more than time in the market. It, it's also very useful in cash flow in the market. Yes. And then I have a question for you. Yeah. That's something that I want to talk about on the next episode, if you're cool with this. I'm always cool with any topic, man. You basically said when you're doing options trading, the price doesn't matter. And so I'd love to explore that because that is so opposite of all the thinking I, I think anyone's ever had about investing. Yeah, I think uh, particularly... Yeah, we'll talk about that because there's so many other factors that that figure into that formula. So let's talk about that next time. All right, cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Okay. We'll do All right. Thanks, Eddie. Everyone, check the show notes.
uh, Andy's class, Andy's free training. So make sure you experience that. And Andy, next week. We'll talk about, we'll talk about where price does and does not figure in. How about that? All right, cool. Yeah, I, I can't wait to learn that. All right, awesome. All right. Thanks, Andy, appreciate it. We'll see you. Bye.